Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome back to How the Heck Do You Build an Audio PC. This time we are going to look at the BIOS, that mysterious, strange, low-level operating system that runs the entire show sort of behind the scenes, or at least it starts your computer up. The BIOS is the basic in-out system that is embedded into your motherboard that sets everything out. It routes all of the resources, it makes all the things available, it turns things on and off so that the operating system, Windows for instance, can have access to all of the in and out ports. Because ultimately we want to see stuff, we want to stuff stuff in. And in terms of music production, we need the BIOS to be set in kind of a certain way to give us the best chance of achieving low latency, real-time, glitch-free audio into and out of our system. Now, you don't have to fiddle with the BIOS at all. You don't need to. You can get on completely fine without ever looking at it. However, I have found over the years that there are a few things that you can do in the BIOS which will prevent you from tripping over things later or stop a couple of unfortunate things happening and generally speaking make your system run better as a whole. I mean often these sort of things come about through troubleshooting and so some of the things we may do in the BIOS may have absolutely no effect on your system whatsoever if it's running brilliantly. However if it's not running quite as well as you thought or the processor isn't paying you enough attention then there are things in the BIOS that we can do to help with that. It's not scary, it's not dangerous, you can't break anything. And with my little guide here, it doesn't, doesn't even have to be complicated. People will make it complicated, it can get very, very complicated, because there's plenty of stuff out there for overclocking computers and that generally requires a lot of fiddling around in the BIOS with all sorts of strange numbers and weirdness. And that's fine, you can do that if you like, but that's not what we're gonna do here. Our aim, as always, with building an audio PC is stability. Stability first, then performance. That's what we're after, because we don't want we don't want our session to collapse right in the middle of capturing a fantastic vocal from an extraordinary artist. We need stability, and that's what we're looking at in the BIOS. So first and foremost, let's prepare ourselves for entry into the BIOS. Let me grab the computer. Remember this, this is what we built earlier. So, what connections do we need to make in order to get into the BIOS. Well, probably it doesn't really matter. But what I'm gonna to suggest to you is that we should connect a single drive, our system drive. We could connect all of our hard drives, but that's just going to potentially make things more complicated. We wanna keep things simple and clean. Just deal with one hard drive or SSD drive, whatever it is that you are going to be installing Windows on. However, I would add to that that if you are installing onto an M2 card, then also attach a serial ATA drive because you just want to know that all the various aspects of your system are working and present. And if you can see a drive plugged into the SATA port in the BIOS, then you know that that's going to be working. So in terms of what you want to plug into the back of the computer, you are going to need power, first of all. Don't turn it on yet, just plug the power in. You're going to need an appropriate video cable. So the output I've got on here, I have a choice between HDMI and DisplayPort. The old screen I'm using here has an HDMI input, so that's what I'm going to use. HDMI from here into the back of the screen. Another thing you'll need is a keyboard, a QWERTY keyboard of some kind, usually powered by USB. Plug that into one of the regular USB ports. Don't plug it into a USB 3 port or into a USB C port, just regular USB is going to be the most likely to work. Do you need a mouse? No, not really. You can use a mouse in the BIOS sometimes, depending on the BIOS and make and brand of the BIOS, but a keyboard is enough. And then finally, a network cable. Ideally, if you don't have a network cable or if your system is Wi-Fi based or whatever, then maybe ignore it, it doesn't matter. But if you can, plug in a network cable because that's gonna enable you to download the latest version of the BIOS directly to your computer. You can also do this manually on another computer, stick it on a USB stick, stick that in the back. Sure, you can do that, but if you have a network cable, use that. Uh, 
Now hopefully when you turn on the machine, your system will go straight into the BIOS or to a screen that says, I've no idea what I'm doing. Press a button to go into the BIOS. But there's also the possibility that you'll get nothing on the screen at all and that it won't actually get to the point where it can display the BIOS to you. And that's a bit of a problem. So let's turn this on, first of all, to see whether it works. And then I'll point out what to look for if it doesn't. Well, at least I'll try to. So turn on the rocket switch at the back. Press the power button on the top, assuming that's where you have it on your case. Now in the old days, a computer used to go beep when it was ready, when it was good. It doesn't always do that these days. If you get a series of beeps, that's usually a bad sign. But as it is at the moment, I'm getting nothing at all. So as you can see, the system has automatically gone into the BIOS, ready for me to fiddle. But before I take the computer out of the way to look at that, let's have a quick look inside the computer so I can show you what may happen if you don't get the BIOS coming up. First thing to check is check that you've got the input set right on your monitor screen because the number of times you'll be sitting there saying, oh, no signal, no signal. And that's because you've got VGA selected rather than HDMI or something like that. Your, your system won't necessarily automatically detect these things. So looking inside the computer, you may find there are a number of lights. I mean, currently I've got a nice green light over here, which is a good sign. That's usually a good sign. And I know that my system is fine. So I'm not expecting to find any strange lights in here. You may have a two digit LED display down here somewhere. I don't on this board, but that may be showing you a code which you can find in the motherboard, which will probably tell you something completely mystical and unrelated. You may also have some lights next to the memory or next to the SATA ports. And if they stay lit, that might give you an idea about why your system isn't booting into the BIOS. But in all these cases, the most common reason is going to be that your memory isn't seated correctly. So this stuff needs to be reseated, that you have some kind of strange connection to a hard drive. So just pull all of those out and try again. That a video card in the system you may have isn't seated correctly. So please try that again. And lastly, because the processor itself isn't seated. And you know that if you're going to have to take out this whole assembly, that's a pain in the ass to get right. But those are the things to check if your system doesn't boot into the BIOS. Start with the memory, check your ports, anything else that's connected to the system, and lastly, the processor. It's going to be fine, don't need to worry about that. It's going to boot into the BIOS. Let's get stuck into that. Right, so armed with your keyboard, you should then have the screen with the BIOS. You can navigate using arrow keys arrow keys and tab are usually your best options. Often motherboards will give you two flavors of BIOS, an easy version, which is what this is, and a more advanced version, which is what we really want to use. But before you do anything else, make sure the clock and the date is right. It's always wrong, as far as I'm concerned. I guess if you live in the place where they make these things then it might be right, but otherwise, it's always wrong. And if you don't change it, it can sometimes have a strange effect on Windows or other things which are time dependent. Now, of course, if you're using a different sort of motherboard, then it's going to be different. If you're using a gigabyte one, it'll be slightly different. But everything I'm trying to get across in this video should be applicable everywhere, even if the exact place that you do it isn't the same. If you're using an ASUS board, it's going to be roughly the same, regardless of which board you use. So we've selected the time, I'm going to press enter, the date is right, I'm going to tab down to the hour, put that down to what the time actually is, and save it. There's other things we can check in this page as well. It tells us what the version of the BIOS is, it tells us what our processor is, so hopefully that will be right. It tells us that uh, we have two sticks of RAM in that port and in that port and it tells us what it thinks the RAM is although that may not necessarily be the case. It will also show us some storage information. So here's some extra drive I've attached, a four terabyte drive and here's the NVMe, the M2 card that I've installed here and that's what I'm going to be installing Windows on. So I know that that side of the system is working. 
I've got fans going around at nice slow speeds, slow speeds that you're not going to hear, which is perfect. And so currently everything is looking good. Let's get into the details, F7, to go into advanced mode. Now before we do anything else, we need to check that we have the latest version of the BIOS. I could go in here and do a whole load of fiddling and then go, oh, there's a new version of the BIOS, which gives uh, a thousand times more performance and install that and all my settings will disappear. So before we apply any settings, other than the time, we need to check for an updated BIOS. We do that, again, depending on your system, over here somewhere in the tools. I use the arrow keys to go along over to tools and this we use the easy flash utility and it says what do you want to do do you want to do it via a storage device or via the internet now if you don't have your system connected to a network to the internet then you can use a storage device just download it on a usb drive plug that in the back of your computer and it will find it but we're going to attempt to use the internet so we're going to arrow across to via internet, hit enter. And what happens is that the BIOS enables the network connection and reboots itself in order for that to happen. So hit yes. So the system is rebooted. We're now back to this same screen again. Go over to internet. And it's going to attempt to connect to make it all happen for us. DHCP would be the normal way of doing it if you have a fixed IP and you know about those sorts of things and you would choose that option. Okay, great. It's found a new BIOS. We want to download and update it. Do we really want to do this? Yes, of course we do. Now the BIOS is being updated all the time there's kind of a constant flow of incremental updates coming out from the manufacturer and sometimes they are just there to include some greater compatibility or to improve something slightly what you really want is just the latest version that's available when you build your computer to give you the best chance of everything working and everything being compatible checking later on year after year isn't really necessary once your system is up and running that's fine you don't really need to fiddle with it again so let me bring you in closer so you can see this a bit better. Success, reset. Now your system might not go into the BIOS automatically, in which case you should press the delete key or F2 to enter the BIOS. This is a very common screen. This is like the old fashioned BIOS readout, if you like, tells you a few things that are de detected. And then it's given us a message to say that something has changed, something is going on, and you need to press F1 to set up. This can sometimes happen if you've made an incorrect choice in the BIOS. And all it really means is it needs you to go in and put something right. So we're back into easy mode. The clock has remained the same because we set it before. Press F7 to get into the details. Now, as I say, with any other motherboard, if you're not seeing exactly what I'm seeing, what we are trying to find is ways of stabilizing the processor. So that means taking off things like speed stepping or anything related to reducing the power in the system due to thermals or other considerations. Our system should be cooled well enough for it not to require any form of throttling or stepping down or going to sleep or hibernating or any of those factors. There's a couple of other things we can set as well and a couple of things we can turn off. So let me just show you where they are. If at any point this just gets too much for you, then pop along to the exit menu, go to load optimized defaults, save and reset, and consider it done. That'll do, that's enough. That's enough to get you running. But if you wanna go that little bit further, here we go. Start off at the AI tweaker. For the first entry here, the AI overclock tuner, you wanna go down to XMP2. Now this is a factor to do with your memory. Your memory has a profile built into it called XMP, and that provides the motherboard with all sorts of settings and the correct bits and pieces for that RAM. And that's great, that's what we want. However, I will say that I've also seen a lot of situations with a lot of motherboards where XMP doesn't actually work correctly. 
I mean, all of this, all of this is to do with overclocking your system, which means fiddling with lots of different little settings in order to try to find a balance between performance and stability. We're not interested in that. We're interested purely in stability. Now, most of the time, the majority of the time, selecting XMP here is going to result in good things, in good things. But if you find that your system doesn't accept it, that your system won't boot with this enabled, then I'll also show you where to set it manually. So when we choose this, it decides what it is that our memory is. It takes the fact that it's 2667 as opposed to it was saying 2133 and it selects a bunch of other settings as well. Those are now set and that's great. If you find this doesn't work, just leave it to auto, step down to DRAM frequency and set that to the frequency of your RAM that you purchased. That's it really, you don't need to change anything else as far as the memory goes. But if XMP works, then select that. This entry here is an ASUS multi-core enhancement and that gives you an opportunity to select enable to remove any limits to the power and turbo settings. That sounds like an interesting idea. Let's try that. Next, go down to CPU core ratio, and under this setting, you want to sync all cores. Now, the core ratio is a place where you can individually tweak the power of each core all by itself, which is great if you're, again, overclocking and tuning and that kind of thing. We're not. We just want them all to stay the same. The next setting here, the one core ratio limit, you could put in a speed here. It's the multiplier for your CPU. So for a 3.6 gigahertz CPU that's in here, I would put in 36, and that would keep the processor frequency at 36. However, to make best use of turbo mode and other possibilities, you don't necessarily have to set that. It's something which you can tweak over time. You can do testing to see what the thermals are like. If the system is running nice and cool, you could boost this up for a little bit of an overclock to say 38 or to 4 gigahertz, that is entirely possible. But for now, for simplicity, just going to leave it on auto. And then down the bottom, there's an option for internal CPU power management. Select that. Intel speed step, select to disable. Turbo mode, leave to enable. Press escape. That's everything on that page. Use the arrow keys to go along to Advanced. Go to CPU Configuration, select it. Go down to the bottom here, we've got Power Management and we've got Thermal Monitor. Now, Thermal Monitoring is something, again, which is, could affect the speed of the processors. It could clock them down if things get too hot. We want to be in control of the heat and of the airflow, and we've built in fans and air cooling enough to keep the temperature under control. So we don't need the motherboard monitoring the temperature, trying to work out whether it needs to turn things down or not. So it's safe to put that to disabled. Under CPU management control, here's our speed stepping, which has been disabled. This is a new entry, speed shift technology. Not seen that before, but if it's talking about controlling states, that tends to be to do with power states, with power saving and turning things off. So we want to disable that. Turbo mode remains enabled. CPU C state. This is very much to do with moving into low power modes or shutting itself down in hibernation. We want to turn that off. Press escape to come back out. Now those really are the main settings. There's a couple of extra things that we can look at while we're here. So for instance, if you have Thunderbolt installed, if you've installed a Thunderbolt card to expand your motherboard, then you will need to set it here. You'll need to specify exactly which PCIe slot the card is in for any hope of it ever working. Under onboard devices configuration, you can go down to LED lighting and turn it the heck off. Unless of course you like the whole disco flavor thing going on inside your computer. That's fine. Also, this motherboard has a serial port, which is not necessary. You don't have anything connected to it. And so you can disable that. Going across to monitor, this will show you the temperature of your motherboard and the temperature of your CPU. And as you can see, it's very, very low. 23 degrees C is brilliant. 
absolutely fabulous at idle. Uh, if your machine is idling, it doesn't really want to be getting up to any more than 40 degrees centigrade. And under load, then 95 degrees to 100 degrees is a little bit too hot. You want to have it just about under that. But we can look at that if we do some deeper testing in Windows itself. You occasionally get an error if the CPU fan is going too slow because the system's going, oh my goodness me, it's not cooling properly, the whole thing's going to break. But we know that we want our CPU fan to be running slowly because we know that our heat sink is awesome and the airflow is great, so it doesn't have to be running fast. But if you get those sorts of errors that come up, you can simply select it and go ignore. Under boot configuration, you can turn off the logo, the big ASUS logo that comes up, and you can also change the setup mode to advanced so that you always go straight into advanced mode. For secure boot, I'd recommend having the OS type set to other OS. Now that you've done all these changes, under tools, you can go to user profile, go down to profile name, stick a name in, and then save it. That way, if something changes, if you have to change something in the BIOS or something goes wrong, you can come back to a known state where all these settings were already saved, so you don't have to do them all over again. Finally, on Exit, go to Save Changes and Reset. This very helpfully provides you with a list of all the things that you've done, all the changes that have been made. A lot of these are to do with the XMP switch that we enabled. So there is a lot of small adjustment going on there just through selecting that profile, which can be very useful. Go OK to reset and those settings will be applied. Good, that should be it. See, it's not hard. All you've done essentially is you've turned on an XMP profile for the RAM, you've turned off speed stepping for the CPU. That's more or less it. That's it. Doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. All of the stuff in here is all it's all overclocking business that some people really, really like, really enjoy getting in amongst that stuff in order to eke out that tiny little bit more performance. That's not really us. We're looking for stability. We're looking for normalness. We're looking for good, solid performance. And that's what I believe these tweaks will do. So now that you've done, what you want to do is get hold of a little USB key, thumb drive like this, about 8 gig, 16 gig, Plug it into Microsoft.com, download the Windows 10 Media Creation Tool and create the Windows 10 installer onto this. And then join me in my next video where we'll be installing Windows onto the system. It's very exciting. We're really going to get there. We're going to get there. So I hope that's been helpful and I'll see you at the next one.